my heart stopped and I was clinically dead for 38 minutes. A staircase appeared to my right of where I was laying and there was angels on that staircase on both sides and a figure came down the center of it and that figure was Jesus. He looked a little bit like a picture that we had in our church but his hair wasn't long it was it was very short and curly and his beard was was very well trimmed and I knew it was Jesus because I could see the scars in his hands when he took me by my hand and lifted me up out of my body. And I was flying over this meadow, this, this green meadow, and I could smell honey and fresh bread so strong. And I was taken and stood in front of this big gold door. So pure, it was transparent. Well, all of a sudden, this door just flew open by itself. And this intense light poured out of it. I could see the bones in my hands kind of light. I heard these words, depart from me you worker of iniquity, for I have never known you. And in an instant an angel on my left and an angel on my right jerked me up out of there and the peace that I was feeling while I was there was just destroyed. And they carried me across this dark chasm and just dropped me. It was dark but you could see. The stench was so bad it smelled like rotten flesh, but the, hot, the fire was so hot that you could feel the skin bubbling up and running off of you and your flesh just melting and hanging off your bones but when you look down there wasn't nothing wrong with it so it could keep burning and you could keep feeling that sensation all the time and there was no relief from it and I wasn't standing on the floor it was people, other people and these people were clawing at my legs and biting at my feet and my legs trying to pull themselves out from under the people that was on top of them and the whole time, people are being dropped in from above. It's like nobody's making it into heaven. I know that there were some folks getting in, but not nearly as many as you'd think. Because there was a lot of them going into hell. And then all of a sudden, every single time that God had presented himself to me in church, that I had felt the Holy Spirit tug at my heart and try to draw me up to the front to the altar to get saved, Every single time the Lord had dealt with me started playing like a bad movie. I could hear the Holy Spirit calling me. And I knew that all I had to have done was just said yes and went and prayed. And I wouldn't be in this awful place that I was in now. But when I finally made it to the wall and I got up away from the things, the, the people that were biting and clawing at me, this huge, huge demon, the thing must have been 30 feet tall, cracked me with a whip. Across my back felt like it was going to split me in half and knock me right off the wall, right back down into the pit. All of a sudden, I could hear it off in the distance. I could hear a voice, Father, please let me go get him. Let me go get him. I know he'll change, Father. I know he'll do what we need him to do. God, just please, Father, let me go get him. And then all of a sudden, this light started coming from toward heaven because you can see heaven from hell. You can see it. You can see what you're missing out on, which makes it that much worse. And this light starts coming from heaven, and I mean it's coming at a quick pace. I raised my hand up, and Jesus pulled me out of that pit. Demons were screaming. Souls that were there in hell was screaming. Everything was screaming and getting out of his way because, well, he's the boss. And he took me up, and over that green meadow we went again. We was moving faster and faster and faster, back the same way we come. We got back down to the operating room, and I was standing there beside Jesus. And I could see the doctors doing CPR on my body. Well, Jesus picked me up. And I could feel so much love. So much love from him. And he laid me down on myself, putting me back in my body, I guess. And he kissed me on my cheek. And he told me, go tell the world what you have seen. Tell everybody who will listen. Now go and do our Father's work. Go. Two days later, I woke up in intensive care unit. Confess your sins to God. Ask for forgiveness through the sacrifice of the blood of Jesus Christ. And then get up and live by the example that Jesus set for us. That's just how simple it is. It's not hard. Folks make it harder than it is because they think everything's got to be about me. Me, me, me. Folks, it ain't about you. It's about what God wants from you.
vision after I was praying and I started speaking in tongues. We, we heard a really loud trumpet and we shot through the ceiling and we landed in the clouds with the rest of the body of Christ. We also saw Jesus in the clouds. He had brown hair and his face shone like the sun. He wore a long white robe and, and it was, and there were sparkles on it. And, and he had a big blue sash on him as well. And we were wearing similar clothes to him. And we, from um, the clouds, we were allowed to look down and see what was happening on earth. On earth, there was fires and there was any natural disasters you could name. Houses were setting on fires and they, they kept on burning, but they didn't burn out. And people tried to hide from the fires, but the fires could find them. The fire light followed them and had a mind of their own. And we saw people looting and breaking into shops, stealing food and money and clothes and anything they could. They were also breaking into the houses of believers and taking anything that they could steal. There was also Nephilims there and the, the, these Nephilims, they were like giants. They were like 10, 20 feet tall and they were really strong and big and they had sh really sharp teeth. They were chasing people and they killed people, but the people never died. Well, they died, but they kept on regenerating. And and the, the people also built like bunkers and the Nephilims could dig through the metal and the ground and they could like go and torture and kill the people, even though the people didn't die. The Nephilims could like smell them and they were each assigned to one person because there was a lot of them. And also I saw a really big throne in the dream. There, wow. there was like, like a, a throne on the earth? Yeah, it was on the earth and it was like red and gold. And yeah, there was like a, a lot of Nephilims in a circle around the throne, like having golden spears put into the ground, like they were guarding the chair. I had a feeling it was for the Antichrist. The next part of my vision, we were now entering the gates of heaven. The, the gates were really big and large and they were gold and and on the borders of the gates they had like big pearls around them. The pearls were like the size of basketballs and heaven gates, no one touched it but it just opened by itself. They, all the believers were standing outside wow. of the gate. It's like they were standing on the clouds. Yeah. And, and, and Jesus? Yeah, well? and Jesus was there with us. And when we went in, we could see like there was flowers in the grass. There was like a big river and I'm pretty sure it was the river of life. And next to the river of life, there was the big tree of life. And in the tree crowns, there was flowers like yellow and pink and blue and purple. There was also like a room we entered. It, it was like a gift room and there were mountains of gifts for the good things you've done. Now we were going into a room that I'm pretty sure was the marriage supper of the lamb room. Because it had a table that was meters and meters and meters and meters long. And it had a really long white tablecloth over it. And there was any type of foods. Desserts, Italian, gelato, Asian, Thai, any foods you could think of. And when, you, and when you ate from the table, the food that you ate, it went back there. What do you mean it went back there? Like the, the food, it went back to that place. Oh, so there was always an endless supply of food on the table. Yeah, it's like an endless wow, buffet. that's amazing. Yeah, and and we went out of that to look at the mansions, and they were like really tall golden mansions, and they had the signs at the front of the names there, and the mansions were really big and spacious. Signs, signs. Yeah, signs, signs with their names on it, with like with, and the names were written in like fancy writing. Mansions were really tall and gold, and there were even some of them had pinna like pinnacles on the tops. It was like golden walls, golden roofs, and even golden floor. Like it was like like glass gold. Back there was glistening glistening grass, and there was a pretty waterfall. Wow. And when we went out of looking at the mansions, we went into a big room and it looked like a cinema room and there was like a really big cinema screen and there were rows and rows and rows of chairs for all of us to sit and there was a big throne at the back and Jesus was sitting there. And the screen turned on and we could see everything that was happening on earth. The Nephilims, they were like having more powers. They, they could clone themselves and have like more of themselves. And, and then I saw a man walking in he, he was definitely the Antichrist because he came and he sat on the throne. He wore a, he wore a red and gold crown and he looked like, I'm pretty sure he was Obama. He was faceless, but I could see this color of his skin and I could see his really short curly hair. And the Nephilims came to Obama 
to the Antichrist, and the Antichrist tapped them on the shoulder, and it gave them like special powers with invis invisibility, teleportation, and shape shifting. So they shape shifted so they could be like a person, and they tried to help the people build other bunkers. But then when they went out of the bunkers, they turned back into Nephilims, and then they told the Nephilims where they hid the bunkers. Where where, where, where they, they built, built the bunkers? bunkers yeah. Where they built the bunkers? And, and and they used teleportation so they could just teleport into the bunkers without doing any work to get in. The Nephilim was tricking them because then they would go and tell the other Nephilim where these bunkers were built and where these people were staying. Yeah. Right. They like they slid through the ground when they were invisible and they started beating and punching and scratching and biting the people. Wow. But the people wow. didn't know what was going wow, on wow, since wow. the people, since the Nephilims were invisible. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then that was the end of my vision. Wow, that is amazing. And um, so, Jesus allowed us to watch everything that was happening on the earth. We were able to sit in this like a cinema and watch this big screen and see everything that was happening on the earth. Yeah. Like, weren't people like frightened? Because I mean, no. the, the Bible says that there's never going to be a time like it, nor was there ever a time like it before. That the Great Tribulation is going to be so bad. If you're saying these Nephilim look pretty scary. We're sitting in that uh, cinema with Jesus. Like, aren't the kids scared? Aren't we scared? Like, no? Because Jesus is there and he's the light of the world. And he's the light of the world. That's right. And there's no fear in heaven, right? There's yeah. God's perfect love casts out all fear. So that's amazing that, that we can all sit there and watch what's going on on earth, as horrifying as it is. Um, and there's no fear because we're in the safety of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that amazing? It's very important to share it. Um, he gives it. He gives us things not to keep to ourselves, but to share with the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And it's exciting to know that many others um, in the world are, are receiving dreams, visions, and messages. Um, very exciting times we're in, brothers and sisters. I want to encourage you all to look up and um, your redemption draweth nigh. Keep trusting the Lord. Keep on preaching the word in season and out of season and um, just keep on being a light and um, and keep on sounding the trumpet. We love you all so much, family. Bye, and everyone. And we'll see you in the clouds. Bye. Praise Jesus.